All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome again to uh, STU Superstars Training University. I want to just welcome everybody. Thanks for coming in. You still got a little bit of time to text your teams. I'll let them know uh, they, uh, to go ahead and jump on in. Uh, you don't want to miss any of this information that this gentleman is going to be giving uh, for today. It is tax time, and he's going to be hitting some real nuggets that, that pertain to taxes and that type of thing. So you want to get your teams on it. Um, I thank God for the home-based business we have that allows us to uh, be able to take uh, uh, tax advantages and that type of thing. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the man of the hour. This gentleman here is out of Kansas City, Missouri. All right. Chiefs fan. OK. Uh, he is uh, uh, an executive in the transportation uh, industry there in the Kansas City uh, uh, area. Uh, he is a uh, sales director at SD with our business. He's doing over $10,000 a, a month in, in sales. And I don't know if you guys know this, but just recently uh, peeped up on the top 50 board. And do you know this gentleman was sitting on the top 50 uh, when it comes to uh, 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 production uh, and leaders? So I just, we just want to uh, y'all give him a hand, uh, throw some uh, fire, some clap emojis in the, um, in the chat for that. So this gentleman just actually made the top 50 guys on the board. He's, he's, he actually made the board, guys. So we uh, couldn't be more prouder of him. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to go and introduce um, our, our trainer for tonight, Mr. Whitney Morgan. You there, sir? Yes, sir. Ivan, can right. you hear me okay? We can hear you just good. We can hear you just fine. And you did you did mention the Chiefs, man. We do have the hat on this weekend. We got to get it in. But hey, shout out, shouts out to you, Ivan, for being the man with the plan. Uh, I would say the superstars, Billy Scott, if that's okay to say. He's our MC. He's our, he's our guy that, you know, leads the charge and always gets us on point for our trainings and our meetings and things of that nature. Um, so thank you for being you and always uh, taking my calls when I call you and, you know, being the accountability partner with me as well. But let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, it's going to be great information, guys. Let me see if I can actually pull it up. Okay, hold on. All right. It won't let me share my screen. Mm. Yeah, hold on, Ivan. It won't let me share my screen. Okay, there we go. Can you guys see that okay? Give me a thumbs up, Ivan, if I'm all right. It's coming. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're here, guys. Tuesday, January 12th. Good to see everybody once, once again. Uh, this is actually a topic that I'm no, nowhere near a... Uh, uh, an expert or anything like that. But like Ileana told me, like it's good to research things that you don't know about because then you learn a lot in the process. So this is, like you said, it's tax time. This is something that we, we all need to pay attention to as employees and uh, some of us as employees and some of us as home-based, well, all of us as home-based business owners and uh, independent contractors. So this is courtesy of the University of YouTube and Google. Uh, so make sure you contract with your uh, tax professional. I am not a tax professional. I am not a CPA uh, for the legal buffs out there. That is on record. He is recording. Uh, next slide. So what's the uh, thought provoking question of the day to start us off? What is the greatest expense that You're muted with. Here you go. Yes, sir. And he somehow you got muted. All right. Go ahead and start, start, start up. You got muted. Okay. Yes, sir. Host muted me. Whatever. Uh, so, previous question. And now you already saw some of the answers, but put in the chat what you think the greatest expense that you'll ever incur in the course of your life. Like I said, it might be uh, your house. Uh, some people said children. <laughs> the greatest expense you'll ever incur in your life will be children. Uh, what about education, uh, student loans, things of that nature? That's definitely a great expense that you'll incur in your life. Well, the answer is, you guessed it, taxes. Uncle Sam, that is the greatest expense that you will incur over the course of your life is taxes. So that's what we're talking about today. Uh, starting off with employee versus an independent contractor and how these things are broken down. Uh, how the tax implications are broken down as an employee and an in independent contractor. So what's the difference? So we are all agents with FES. At some point you had to review or sign the uh, independent contractor's uh, sales agreement. So within that agreement, it states that 
as a self a self-employed independent contractor you will be operating your own independent business guys buying and selling services available through fes on your own account fes has the right to control and direct the result of your work and not what will be done or how it will be done so you determine how it's done you determine will it when it's done and you are operating your own business uh skip through all that but basically you will you will receive a 1099 form from fes uh via mail issued either to your ein if you have an llc or to your social security number if you're in, in, acting as an independent sales agent so this is all coming out of the independent sales representative agreement Lord, guys it's on your back office um so make sure you check it out make sure you know exactly what you signed up for that's the uh the corporate part now let's get into the good part employee what is an employee um i had i had to get a picture with a cubicle it's just fit fitting but uh performs uh duties dictated by and controlled by others um so you are you are a person that their their daily routine is is determined by someone else uh you are provided training uh in most cases uh, you have specific hours every day that you're required to work, that you're expected to work. Uh, you have a boss, you have a supervisor. Uh, you are expensive to the employee. Employees are expensive because you are provided uh, benefits and things of that nature from the employer. And uh, of course you pay them as well. The employer pays them as well. There's an interview process. Uh, you have to be selected from a list of candidates uh, for that particular position. What else? Uh, how are you paid? You're paid hourly, a, a salary or commission or some sort of combination on that front. Uh, usually works in the company offices. Obviously, COVID has put a lot of us home, uh, myself included, been working from home. Um, that's been excellent for my FES business. Don't tell nobody. Um, so you work within a contract. You are assigned a contract once you become an employee. Uh, you also rely on uh, your employer for tax deductions uh, and benefits. So uh, medical care, dent dental care, uh, eye, eye care, vision, vision, things of that nature uh, are all covered by the employer and you pay a specific amount of that out of your paycheck uh, bi-weekly usually. Uh, and then you have the job security, quote unquote, unless uh, a global pandemic happens and everybody has to reevaluate their life then you may not have job security anymore. Independent contractor, that's just us guys. Uh, as the picture kind of shows, we're, we're the type of people that go against the grain. Most people want that job security. Most people want uh, what they've been taught uh, their whole life is to go out, get a good job, get an education, go get a good job and work for somebody for 20, 30, 40 years and get a pat on the back or a watch at the end of that term. Uh, those days are gone. Even with even within employees, employees have become more entrepreneurial in their thought process. That you know they they'll evaluate that contract with that employer, or that agreement with that employer, or obviously their salary and things of that nature. And they'll look, look at their own value, determine maybe I should work at this job or that job based on what my my value is and what the market says my value is. So even employees have gotten a lot more entrepreneurial in spirit and in mind in recent years, but we are a little different. Uh, obviously with FES, we utilize the third party service. Uh, it's a software online, UCES, not-for-profit. Uh, they have an app and they have an online login system. We utilize that as well as other products such as Credit My Rent. Credit My Rent is another company by itself, as well as other products. And you guys know this, but typically uh, we have several clients, as most of us do. We have several clients or customers that we service. Uh, we don't have a particular boss per se, but the, the client is the boss. Uh, you may or may not be provided training. Uh, obviously, we're right now we're on STU. We're training each other, which means we're training each other from experience, uh, which is the best way. It's not from a booklet written by uh, consultants, outside consultants. It's not a booklet written by the CEO who has who's never done any of our jobs. Uh, it's, it's written and it's, it's disseminated amongst each other. We train each other. Uh, generally, independent contractors submit invoices for the service or product. So it, actually, when you're sending your link or you're entering the information in for that customer, that's kind of our invoice. Uh, we're letting them know it will be $188, uh, $99 activation fee. 
blah, blah, blah. That, that is our invoice. Uh, and we are cheap for employers to hire. So employers do hire us as well for specific projects, uh, depending on the, on, the, on the employer and things of that nature. But they're not, they're not required to pay us uh, benefits and things of that nature. It's just straight cash, homie. Uh, we set our own hours, of course. Uh, so that, that can be good and bad, right, for some people. Uh, if you set your own hours and you're consistent um, and you're, you have great time management skills, that can be a benefit. If you don't, that means you may not ever work your business or you may not ever dedicate time to your business. Um, you have full control on what you work that you take on. You control what you work on. Um, you control what you pursue or what you uh, put, present in front of customers. Obviously, we can advertise our, service, our services to get new business. Uh, we have to market ourselves, of course. Um, nobody's giving us customers. Nobody's giving us work like a job. We have to go out there and get the work or the clients. Uh, Self-employed, we set our own rates, um, generally. Uh, responsible for handing, handling em employee benefits. So FES doesn't provide us... Uh, um, Health care and things of that nature, we have to handle that on our own. Some of us sign up with my care plan and things of that nature, so it is available, but we have to make that decision to do that. So employee taxes, guys, I, I really want you to, to pay attention to this. Employees are taxed five up to six times before they even receive their income. Five to six times. Look at your look at your uh, dep that direct deposit. Look at your check. I know you've seen it. I know you've seen that Medicare come out. I know you've seen that federal income tax. Some of you guys get lucky based on the state and um, you don't get state income tax, but you get Social Security. Uh, they say millennials, we're not going to get any, any Social Security, but we still get taxed for it. Uh, retirement taxes. If you have retirement uh, based on your IRA, you get taxed for that as well. So this is, this is all happening before you get your actual money if you're an employee. As an independent contractor, I see taxes. You're allowed business deductions before paying taxes on your earned income. When I saw this, man, I almost said hallelujah. Put some ones in the chat if that if that makes you excited. If you 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 are able to deduct various business deductions before you have to pay taxes on your earned income. This is how we're operating. The total opposite of an employee. And then there are over a thousand possible business deductions. Obviously, I couldn't put that on the slide, but there's so many business deductions that you can take advantage of. So, guys, whew, this is a this is a touchy subject, but this is what we're talking about when you operate your own business. This is why uh, people like Trump paid the amount of taxes he did. Obviously, he's a tax avoider and not a tax evasionist. I just made up a word, sorry. But tax avoider. Uh, this is an action taken to lessen the tax liability and maximize the after-tax income. So it's legal. These are rules written within the legal code that are legal loopholes that you can take advantage of to lessen your tax liability and maximize your after-tax income. Tax evasion is when there's a failure to pay or deliberate underpayment of taxes. So there's a specific action to not pay taxes, even though those taxes are due and owed to the, uh, the IRS. So this, this uh, graphic kind of breaks it down even further. Tax evasion, illegal avoidance of taxes, underreporting of income, falsifying records, claiming fake expenses or dependence on uh, return on income. So you're lying to the government, you're lying to the IRS. Uh, this let it be known, nor myself or Ivan Brown are encouraging anyone on this call to lie to the IRS. What we're telling you today is how to take advantage of the legal loopholes within the tax code to your benefit for home-based business. So tax avoidance, lowering your taxes through legal means, loopholes in, in the tax code, uh, deferral plans, such as a Roth IRA, things of that nature, uh, tax credits. There, there are tax uh, credits and tax deductions as well, and we'll get into that shortly. Qualified deductions for a home-based business and independent contractor. Definitely hire a tax professional, um, possibly after you get off this call. At least look into some in your local area or reputable. 
I actually found a lady uh, online who is a tax professional and is, she's a network marketer. So she understands our struggle. I think her name is Your Tax Girl. Uh, so somebody put that in the chat, Your Tax Girl. Uh, I think she's based out of Illinois, but I'm definitely gonna be hitting her up. Um, so a tax professional's job is to help you turn your everyday living expenses into profitable tax deductible business expenses. I'm gonna say it again. Their job is to help you turn everyday living expenses into profitable tax deductible business expenses. Their job is to do it. So if you go to a tax professional and you say, hey, I have a home-based business. Uh, this is what I do. What can you do for me? And they're, and they're acting nonchalant or they're acting shy or nervous. They're not, gonna, they're not gonna be able to help you. You want somebody who's confident on what they're doing and what they know. So red flags. So it's not, it's not all great. It's not all sweet, right? There are rules that you have to stay within the confines of. Um, make sure you're not reporting expenses or credit not associated with your business. So do not try to take expenses that you've incurred on your personal uh, uh, debit card or credit card and try to make it seem like that was for your business when it wasn't. Uh, items of lavish or extravagant nature for personal or recreational use. Uh, a lot of times that's uh, alcoholic beverages and things like that. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but don't get overzealous in what you're reporting uh, for personal or recreational use. Large deductions out of line with the amount of income you were reporting. You, your expenses cannot exceed your taxable income, guys. So do not try to deduct more expenses than what your actual income is. Abusive use of deductions or credits associated with your business. So it's just getting out of hand. You're, you're trying to get every uh, deduction or credit in the book. You, that's why you need a tax prof professional to help you out in this regard. But these are some of the rules of thumb that you, you should pay attention to. So what are the keys to success regarding your home-based business? If you are an FES agent, guys, you should create your own business. You should create your own LLC. Put some fire in the chat if you already have your own LLC or corporation in uh, conjunction with your FES business. Uh, you may or may not see behind me uh, Empowerment Solutions. That's, that's my LLC. So that's what I will be claiming these business taxes on. Uh, create a de dedicated space for your business. So you can't just say you have a home-based business, guys, and you're working off your toilet or you're working off your uh, kitchen table, or you're working off uh, your couch. That's not a dedicated business space. You have to have an actual room, an actual confined space that is dedicated to your business with, uh, of course, a desk, uh, computer, chair, things of that nature, uh, filing cabinet, uh, ideally. Um, so that if you were audited, what they call it now is an examination. If you were examined, they don't really call it audited anymore. But if you are examined, they can walk in and say, where's your business? Where's your office? And you would be able to show them a dedicated space dedicated to your office. You must carry on a bona fide business. Uh, the business part of your home must be your principal place of business. So you can't have, you can't have, uh, it can't be a home-based business if you have a larger space or another space outside of your home where you actually, excuse me, where you actually, uh, yeah, they muted me again, but we're, we're back, we're out. Um, so yeah, you, you have to have a bona fide place within your home to dedicate your business to. It cannot be outside of your home. You can also have a space within your home where you meet customers or you do business with them. You, you uh, exact meetings within a specific place Obviously that could be your kitchen table or things of that nature, but it has to be dedicated to your business and you have to have a way to prove that. Okay. You have to get your accounting game together. So you have to make sure that you have a business account that goes with that LLC or that corporation. So you have to make sure, and this is something I still have to do guys. I haven't done it yet. You have to set up a business account uh, using your EIN that you got for the LLC. 
That way you're able to deposit money from your FES business into that business account tax-free because remember, it hasn't been taxed yet. What you do is you once you, tax time comes around, you put all those uh, tax deductions in front of the uh, IRS first to say, hey, hey, I really didn't make this much. I really didn't make this much. I really didn't make this much until hopefully you're at zero or a very low number. So it hasn't been taxed yet. It's opposite to what an employee, uh, like I said, five to six times you've been taxed already before it's even in your pocket. Track all your business expenses, uh, your uses of your laptop, your cell phone, your car, your internet, et cetera. Make sure you track the uses of these assets because this is uh, obtainable for your business expenses. Your business must be for profit. It cannot be a charity, uh, not for profit or anything like that. And you definitely must run your business at least four to six hours to, per week to be an active business. These are all, this is all terminology from IRS tax code. So let's keep going. What's one way you can take advantage of your home-based business? Put your logo on your car. Um, this is something that uh, VP Kendra Mack mentioned that she does. So when you put your advertisement or your logo on your car, you can track a percentage of every mile driven towards business expenses because you're advertising your business. Put a one in the chat if that helps you out. Uh, because the, the legal terminology is you may be in pursuit of profit because you're always advertising at the gas station, at the Chiefs game, wherever you are, you're advertising your business. So it can be documented that you're advertising your business. Therefore, you can write that off. Uh, make sure you use mileage uh, log apps such as trip log. I used to use that when I was uh, driving folks in uh, Uber and Lyft. I wish I had this business when I was still doing Uber and Lyft. I would have been fixing folks credit while driving them around and getting trip log money off of it as well. More game. Track your money spent for your business presentation. What is that? Who's the business? Put in the chat. Who's the business? Me. That's who. You are the business. Therefore, the money spent towards the upkeep of your business is tax deductible, guys. So make sure you keep the receipts for these types of items because we all do it. If, if as a guy, I know, um, and I mean, my barber, he's been all the whack, but like generally when you go, you have to go somewhere important or special, you go get a haircut. So that's tax deductible. Keep the receipt. Even if it's cash app, take a screenshot, do something. Your clothing as well. It's all part of the business uh, business transaction, the business presentation. Meals and entertainment. I know you've seen this all the time. Uh, especially the top dogs, even in a, a regular company, uh, they may pay for a meal for their employees and things of that nature. And the, and the employees are like, oh, he's such a nice boss. He's such a great supervisor. That's tax write-off. That's a tax write-off for the company, guys, especially when he's using the, the company car to pay for it. It's still a good gesture, but they're writing that money off and they're getting it right back. Um, so these are things that you can do. If you have your business in place, you have your business account in place, and you're crossing your T's and dotting your I's, you could technically take a customer out to dinner and discuss what's negatively affecting their credit and write that off, okay? Uh, like I said, consult with a, a certified CPA or a tax professional. Uh, don't ask me or Ivan, because we don't know. Uh, company gifts. So this is this as well. The company uh, every year may give you, I know my company does, they give us gifts and things of that nature. Um, the, whole, the, whole, the whole company, all the employees, uh, they may give you a gift. So this, this can be written off as well. So for you as FES agents, you may gifts, and I get. I actually gave my team gifts. I gave my team uh, some books and things of that nature. I gave a few realtors uh, some different mugs and things like that because um, they gave me a lot of business last year. So here, here's this uh, mug. Give me some more business next year. Thank you. Um, but if I would have put my business cards or my logo on that, I could have written that. I could have written that off those gifts that I gave them. So this is something that I know now and will be implementing in the future. As with anything else, keep your receipts because it's very important. 
uh, hire your children. It's possible. You can do it. So on the employee side, uh, you get a tax you get a tax credit for your children. But on the business side, you get a tax deduction for your children if you hire them. But you have to keep everything up to par. You have to have um, a 1099 on file. Your child has to fill out a 1099 if they're between the ages seven and 17. Uh, you must have a contract in place for what the services are they are supposed to perform. So it has to be written down uh, what their what their their independent contractors so they don't have a job title or job description, but it has to say uh, what their 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 independent what their project is for your business. What are they hired to do? Uh, you must have a ten a W nine on file as well as well as a ten ninety nine. So this is something definitely uh, do your your YouTube, your Googles, and make some calls to some tax professionals to say, hey, what steps do I need to take place to hire my children? Some of, some of you guys, my, mine are young, but some of you guys probably got a few teenagers around the house not doing nothing. Hire them. But that's all I got, Ivan. Uh, hopefully you guys have taken something from this. Um, the biggest thing I would say take from this is to document everything regarding your business use excel uh spreadsheets use keep your receipts scan your documents a good um a good scanner app is cam cam scanner thank you Roe jones um so you can use that so even when you're out don't wait till you get home to the computer um scan it while you're out scan it scan the receipt scan some things that nature and email it to yourself you know keep everything cross your t's got your eyes and um See you at the TLP. Ivan, I give it back to you. All right, man. That was a, that was a awesome presentation, man. Thank you, Whitney, for that. That was big game, man. That y'all get y'all put some fire and some uh, some claps um, emojis in the uh, in the chat uh, box there. That was a uh, that was big game. So thank you again, uh, SD Whitney uh, Morgan, for that. Uh, I. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I took I took note. I really did, um, especially the part about hiring your children. Um, that's that's sixty one hundred dollar uh, deduction. About hiring your kids, and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think you can hire more than I think I can hire both my kids. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's for each kid. And so, um, guys, that's if you have children, um, that's that's big. Uh, uh, Whitney, I'm I am going I'm gonna break the rule. I'm gonna ask you a question. Um, it like can people who don't have children but they have nieces and nephews? Do they can they hire? I'm not talking about deducting them on the taxes. I'm not talking about doing that. Um, but can they hire them? Uh, uh, their nieces and nephews or not, or does it have to be your direct um, dependents? I would assume so, but contact your local CPA. Yeah, they're going to have to get with a, with a local uh, tax professional on that. All right, guys, make sure you have a tax professional. Um, Whitney shouted out uh, your tax girl. Um, she is uh, she's a serial network marketer, um, but she does have a, a, a tax business. So, um, you know, and Eric Worry does promote somebody too as well, but uh, I'm very familiar with the lady that uh, Whitney um, recommended. And so, um, guys, you know, uh, it's, it's also an advantage too to have a tax professional that is a network marketer, and that is a starch believer and practicer of network marketing. It just helps out uh, that much more because they know the ins and outs. And guys, the tax code changes. So you have to make sure that, you know, you, you're with a professional that make sure they stay uh, uh, on, on top of all the changes. Every time there's administration change, there are different uh, tax code changes, guys. But uh, Definitely read the tax code. I'm now it's long. I'm not saying start at page one and try to read all through. You're not going to be able to do all, do it like that. The tax code is very long. But things that deal with what it is that you're looking to deduct or 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 the or that deal with your business specifically, um, you may want to read up and brush up on the tax code because it's very uh, very informative. Um, uh, you don't have to have a you don't have to have a tax law degree to uh, to so much understand it. All right. Um, don't get caught up and in, intimidated by all those codes and that type of thing. They're just it's just a uh, tax jargon. All right. Um, yeah, anybody got any questions uh, that we can answer? Um, I'll open, um, we got a few minutes. I'll open up for questions. You OK if I make a statement? <laughs> Go ahead, Kim. OK. Um, you know, as everybody knows, I'm a realtor, so I do a Schedule C every year. And the easiest way to keep track of everything, especially for those who are lazy, and you might not keep copies of everything is, you know, QuickBooks is no longer where you have to order the software and like download it on your computer. It's web-based and they'll even let you pay monthly. And if you simply take your business checking account and you type in every line item, it will also help you to be able to determine the categories 
of where all your deductions are. And it'll also create a profit and loss statement for you, which you want to have because you want to know where you are at all times in your business. But I just wanted to mention that if you do it in QuickBooks and you have a checking account and you simply enter your statements, that's going to give you a very good basis to have what you need for your professional tax preparer. Once again, just like Whitney, I have to put out a disclaimer and I am not allowed to act outside of my area of expertise as a realtor. I am not a tax professional, so please seek advice from that person. But I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. Back to you. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you for that. And uh, also, uh, two guys, uh, use, use digital tools. Whitney, uh, he mentioned cam, uh, cam scanner. I think, uh, you know, I think you can actually take a picture with your camera or you can scan with your camera the, uh, the receipts and that type of thing. So you don't have a big old pile of receipts on the floor like I do. OK, so uh, I'm, I'm getting this year, I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of all that and I'm going to get this thing digital. Uh, uh, SD Tamara Ellison also put in the chat box um, an application called Z looks like a Zoho.com. Uh, slash expense slash pricing. It looks like you can manage your expenses and your mileage and you can capture your receipts. Uh, yeah, you can do that, everything uh, online. They actually have a free version for um, self-employed. Oh, wow. So if you're by yourself, you can use the services for free. Um, it does, it captures the receipts. It'll automatically itemize them. Do they have it in an app? It's an app. Okay. It's iOS, Android, and it's a website. Yep. Wow. Okay. All right. So guys, yeah, um, you know, uh, somebody also put intuition self-employed. So yeah, there are many, of, I mean, there's a plethora of digital tools out there. Um, don't try to do it all by yourself. Don't get overwhelmed trying to, you know, I mean, if, you know, if you want to buy, you know, if you want to buy a file cabinet, you can, you know, put in the corner of your whatever dedicated space that you're going to use as, uh, as your office, because um, you do want, you know, you do need to keep files on certain things, but guys, but mostly for the most part, try to keep it as digital as you can so that you don't have uh, an overwhelming or intimidating amount of receipts and, and paperwork to do at the end. You can just take those apps, uh, have them printed out or have them emailed or digitally sent to your tax preparer. Yeah, and, um, and then Ivan, do that. Yes, sir. I got a good one for you. I've been using and this one. You don't have to worry about trying to track your mileage. It does all that for us. So the Intuit for the self-employed is an app. Mm -hmm. So every time you drive, it's calculating. It also has a list of everything for the self-employed that you can write off. So you don't even have to think about it. It's already oh, wow. in the app. Okay. So if you go to your app store, you can look at the Intuit for the self-employed. That's a good one. Is there a monthly charge for that or annual charge? Uh, I, uh, annual, I think I, uh, it starts off about, I got it for 59 for the year, and then it's 99 for the year. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. worth right. it. That's very affordable. All right, thank you, Donald. Thank you for that. Appreciate it, uh, RSD. Appreciate that, man. Hey, uh, Ivan. Yes, yes, ma'am. I just wanted to add, this was an amazing call, Whitney. You smashed it. And um, there's another, I know people were putting in some other things that you can do outside of uh, what was presented. And I do got, you, of course, check with your tax professional, but you can also write back, write off the charge offs and the chargebacks that we get as a loss on your business. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. And me and Ashton was talking about that. So can you imagine all the retractions? Because that's kind of like if you had a department store and you return something. So um, pay attention to your losses because you can take that off of your, that can count against, you know, your, in, your income as well. Wow, that is amazing. I never knew that. That is awesome. Uh, so you can deduct uh, chargebacks, uh, retraction, excuse me, I'm putting in a type in the chat. Retraction. Right. Yeah. Because you were in pursuit of the full amount, which was expected, but you know, they cancel or they, you know, they took it yes, back. And absolutely. so they take back your money, but you were in pursuit into the full amount. Okay. But again, check with your tax professional because everybody's case is different. All right. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thank you, VP, for that information. Now, wow. This is guys, this, this, uh, this, uh, this training was, uh, was, was worth the price of admission guys. I'm telling you, um, um, of your time at least. So, I mean, this was really, um, informative. So, um, again, uh, Ivan, I have a question. All right. Um, Who's that, Chanel? Go ahead. Yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, so if you don't have an LLC, are you saying that it's not possible to do deductions for your home-based business if you don't have an LLC? No, he's not, no, he's not saying can, that at all. Whitney, did right. you want to, did you, I can take it or, or you can take it or anybody um, who wants to take uh, it. You, you're on the right track, Ivan. No, there, what I was saying is there's different, 
deductions for an independent contractor and for a home-based business. So I was incur I was saying everybody in here is an independent contractor because you're you have, you have a sales agreement with FES. But I was encouraging everyone to get an LLC and a business account so that you you can take advantage of all the uh, tax advantages of a home-based business. Yes, but you, the answer is uh, you can still take all. You can still take practically all of these deductions as a uh, as a, a self-employed independent contractor. Um, you can do that too as well. But just make sure you keep very good records, and um, because so you will be having to file your Schedule C. Yeah. So you, you will have to file and your. And you know, that that just sets you up more professional, and it also helps you when you maybe applied for business credit yes. and things of that nature, you could buy cars in your business name. You can get it done in brass street. So it opens up a lot more elements for you, but mm -hmm. definitely you can write off pretty much everything mm -hmm. the same way. That's definitely just, a goal of mine. I was just trying to make sure. That's a very good question. Thank you for asking. Cause I know some other people had that same question, Chanel. So thank you uh, for asking. Also, we get 1099s just because we're in a network marketing company. And that document alone is what's going to precipitate you going to a tax professional and being able to use a schedule C to write off things. But one thing you want to be mindful of, cause we see this when people try to buy houses is it's great. And you can have all those deductions, but try to be strategic with it. Cause you know, you're getting ready to go buy a house and you know, you're getting ready to go buy a car. And you know somebody's going to be looking at your debt to income ratio. Don't get all hog wild on trying to write off everything. You might want to bite the bullet and pay your quarterly taxes that year. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to claim the income for that $400,000 house that you can clearly afford because you were too busy trying to play the game. I've actually seen people try to backtrack and had to go to their tax professional and have them redo their taxes so they can have a bottom line number that allowed them to get qualified to buy that house. So please remember that and don't be afraid to give that advice to people as you're doing credit karma consult, because remember, we're trying to help people look at their whole financial picture, not just restoring their credit. And if we don't tell them, then they don't know. And you're helping them do all this work and they're out there playing in their taxes and unity to think about bringing it up. So I just wanted to mention that. Wow. Good point. Very good point. Yeah. I've seen that too as well, uh, because if you, if you deduct everything and you show that you've uh, made, you know, zero. So yeah, you didn't have to pay taxes, uncle Sam, but um, you know, it, it shows to that mortgage broker it's shown that you've made zero income. So, you know, you need to, you know, look at that also too. Uh, you need to talk to a mortgage professional if you are doing this. And um, I don't know if stated income uh, loans are back yet or not. Um, but uh, you know, they, uh, they, uh, I know they were making their way back, but I'm not sure as far as to as if they're back on the market yet or not. They're out there again. They're out there again. Okay. So, you know, you may be able to use a state of income, but you have to talk to a mortgage uh, professional and a tax professional to figure out how to do that. Okay. So, you know, as a disclaimer, we can't give you that kind of advice. All right. So very good. Very good. All right. It's about 642. We're going to go, I'm not going to, uh, without further ado, I'm not going to, um, uh, keep everybody. Um, uh, looks like, uh, we, you know, we ended early, but I mean, you know, some, a lot of times good trainings, you know, they're, con they're con condensed, they're very efficient. And so um, we got this done in less than an hour. So, uh, so good job, guys. All right. So uh, join us. Uh, um, tune in next Tuesday, um, same time, uh, same bat channel, uh, the same zoom number and uh, for, for Superstars Training University, STU, all right? So thank you guys for uh, joining us this evening. Y'all go enjoy your Tuesday evening. Can I make evening. a quick announcement? Make it a quick... Oh, sorry, can I make a quick announcement? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, tomorrow night at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, my crew's doing a Zoom. It's basically gonna be treated like a regular overview, uh, just giving these guys a chance to get their chops wet. Paige will be doing the first half of the presentation. Eddie will be opening up the floor and hosting the call. I will be doing part two, and then Reese will jump in and close it up just making sure everybody is empowered to be the leaders that we all are. So we appreciate your support. If you simply look in, uh, I'll go ahead and post it in Superstars Nation tonight. That's and all the information to be there. Please come support. Thank you so much. Absolutely. All right, guys. Y'all, let's, let's, let's support. All right, guys, you guys have a great evening and a good night. I, all right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ivan. <clears throat> Can I ask Keely a question? Go ahead. Really quickly, thank you so much for that information, Keely. I've been, I've been playing paying close attention. The question I have 